Hello and welcome to the Meriwether Knitting Podcast. My name is Gabriella and I'm coming to you from my home in Germany where I'm so excited to chat with you today about knitting and crafting and all that I've been up to the last couple of weeks. So I hope you'll get cozy, maybe get something to drink, get a cozy project to work on and join me for a little while for some knitting chat. I'd love to hear what you're working on, if you're knitting, what you have on the needles, maybe what you're crocheting or what's been inspiring you creatively lately. I am just in the full swing now, finally, of autumn knitting. I'm saying that as I'm sitting in a very, in front of a very sunny window on a very warm day. I have the balcony door open. It's, it's really a lovely warm day today, but I feel like finally I've embraced autumn and I'm just feeling like it is really knitting season. I've loved knitting. I've loved my projects. I've been so inspired and like, honestly, like just itching all the time to, to be sitting with my needles and knitting and working on projects. So yeah, I'm excited to share with you what I have today. And for my standard amount of finished objects, I have quite a mountain. I have three finished objects today to share with you, which is just like a lot for me. I feel like I'm really a slow knitter. I take my time and um, yeah, I'm just not the fastest knitter. And I, I don't know, it just feels amazing to have three finished objects. So I'll get started right away. And the project of the hour, the biggest project that I have finished and I'm so excited to share with you is my rug sweater. Oh, I'm so, so excited to have this off the needles. Here it is, it's all finished. I'm so pleased with how it turned out. Um, I've shared this project on this channel, on this podcast, as I knit it from the very beginning through, and um, oh, it was just such a joy to knit. So it's amazing to have it finished and ready to wear, ready to just take me through the cold months. I've already worn it out on a really cool morning. I just popped it on and went to the park with my girls and it was just the most cozy, delightful, garment to have on. Um, it feels so rustic and so fun, but it's just, yeah, it's just such a fun, fun, very wearable sweater for me. It's giant. It's really oversized. Um, I took a few photos, or my husband took a few photos of me wearing it when I finished it, so I'll share some here so you can see a little bit of how it looks. I'm not standing up in the photos, so it's not like completely like you can see everything, but um, it really is such a, a cozy, big oversized knit and um yeah usually i feel like i like things that are a little bit more not really fitted but like a little bit more tailored um and this is definitely really just giant on me but i love it i think it's cozy it's wonderful and i know i can layer it with other things underneath i really like wearing knitwear as outerwear and so i think this will be perfect for that because i can layer pieces underneath um and it will just be super, super warm when it's like winter time. So yeah, that's my folk rug. I call it the folk rug because um, I saw a pro project on Ravelry that inspired me, that had changed the motif of the rug pattern. Um, instead of having this kind of a Moroccan rug inspired design, more geometric shapes as the motif, there were more floral motifs and they called it the folk rug, which I just loved the idea of. I've been really enjoying folk music so much lately, listening to it. And um, my husband Nick is a musician and he we've just been playing a lot of folk music. And um, so I love that concept. I love the earthy concept of, of the flowers and um, just kind of fit my personal taste a little bit better. And so, yeah, I decided to change the motifs rather than keeping those rug motifs, which I think are beautiful. They just don't, they don't really fit my personal taste as much. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. I just really simply used the existing kind of charts that were there and filled in the blanks with, with designs and motifs that I wanted. So the first motif is like a three row, five stitch motif. And I just replaced it with flowers. Um, I could have spaces apart and left one blank and then maybe that would have looked more in alignment with the original pattern, but I like that I kept the flowers close together. I think it looks lovely. Um, I think it would also look cool if the flowers were spaced apart, if it was like, you know, the main color and then a flower and then like more stitches. Does that make sense? I don't know, but I think that would also look wonderful, but I chose to do it this way and yeah, I'm not upset about how I chose to do it. I think it looks great. And then I did another row of flowers, like a little bit of larger flowers. I think that they look really cute too. And then I had a lot of fun designing this motif, this chart. Um, 
and I'm really, really excited about how this turned out too because I kind of had the stitch count, you know, the row count and the stitches and I really tried out different kind of ways of creating a cool floral or botanical motif and I think it turned out really lovely. So I'm really happy with that as well and I think, yeah, I think it's just a really unique and cool design. Um, what makes me just especially just really happy and joyful about this motif is that it reminds me a lot of thistles. You know, the purple thistles that pop up the very end of summer before autumn. Um, they were popping up as I was finishing this sweater. I saw them everywhere. And I just, like, I felt like this just such a, such a joy and seeing this kind of reflection of this sweater in nature. Um, it, they're, the color is so similar to this colorway. It's just a bright purple that just pops up. And um, yeah, it really reminded me, okay, the autumn is coming, summer is coming to an end. And um, yeah, I just felt like this is like, actually I would rather, I think even more than calling it the folk rug for me, I would almost want to call it like my thistle rug, the thistle sweater, because it just reminded me, these little motifs remind me of exactly how thistles look. I'll try to put a picture of what I'm talking about. These blue thistles or purple thistle, thistles or whatever exactly they're called. Um, I think that this motif here looks exactly like them. They're just little kind of thistle at the top, the purple thistle and the beautiful greenery. And then there's like other little flowers and little motifs between, which adds some interest. Um, my colorwork motifs are a lot more dense than the original. The original has a lot of space and negative space, which I think looks gorgeous. But um, I just love how it turned out. I think it's beautiful and it was so much fun to knit. And yeah, then the last two colorwork motifs are just repeated from the top. Um, if you've been following this journey of knitting this sweater, you'll know that I had a neckline, which is a checkered neckline, like a knit two, a purl two, knit two, purl two, for two rows or three rows, and then reverse purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, for another, so it was kind of a checkered pattern rather than a rib. The original pattern has a rolled neckline, rolled um, hems and everything. I didn't want the rolling. I wanted something a little bit more contained, and um, I ended up going with this, at the, on the on the hem here, um, uh, three by two rib, so if you knit three, purl two, and I love how it turned out because it really lays flat, it has this kind of large visual impact which I feel like flows well with the design of this big oversized sweater, and um, I ended up doing sweater surgery to correct the neckline, and oh, it was so much fun, it turned out so easy, and so, it was so easy to do and so much fun to do, just picked up the stitches, and then knit them up, knit up the, the neckline. In the show notes, I will link the amazing video tutorial that I used to figure out how to do that little sweater surgery and change the neckline. Um, you know, because this was the cast on edge, I couldn't really picture in my mind how I would fix that, um, but it was actually super easy, and this tutorial I watched was such a help, so I will link that in the show notes in case you ever need help with that, like kind of going back direction cast on edge direction and um, fixing something or reworking a collar or something like I did here. And I think that that really made the sweater look so much more cohesive and I love how it looks on. I love this ribbing. It's like, it was such a, an intimidating thing for me to think about doing that little surgery. I'm not a big surgery person when it comes to sweaters. I'm not a big, you know, frogger. I tend to just make it work when I make a mistake. But um, I'm just so happy that I decided to do it because it made the biggest difference and I love, love how it looks. You know, this pattern wasn't my original intention for this yarn. When I got this yarn, um, I got it on sale. This yarn is, by the way, Jameson and Smith Chunky Yarn, um, which I got on sale and I think there's still some. It's discontinued, but um, they're selling it on their website until I think it runs out, of course. And um, I, I got it on sale a, a couple of years ago now because I thought it looked really fun and it was a great deal and Jameson and Smith yarn is just gorgeous. Um, I think this yarn is so beautiful. It's got the most beautiful like, it's just, the colorways are so beautiful. But I chose these colors because that was all that there is and all that there was. The colorways are fuchsia and lupin. Lupin is the lighter color, the contrasting color, and fuchsia is the darker, darker fuchsia color. Um, but I wasn't sure at the beginning what I was going to knit with it and then I decided I would knit the Anne of Cleves pattern in the fuchsia colorway, um, which is a pattern from the Tudor Roses book by Alice Starmore. And it's a gorgeous pattern. That book is just a favorite of mine. I love it. It's really probably my favorite knitting book, just a pattern book. I just, I love it so much. I have like, 
a real love for the Tudor period. I love that period of history, that era, and um, so I love the patterns, and I think Alastair Moore is like maybe my favorite knitting knitwear designer as well, such an inspiration. But, um, and Jade Starmore as well, her daughter, who also designed a few patterns in that book. Um, but, yeah, I, I had, I bought, I think, 10 balls, 10 hundred gram balls of the Fuchsia colorway and five of the Lupin colorway, thinking that's going to be enough for a couple of projects, maybe a child sweater for, like, the Lupin colorway and then, like, an adult sweater. But I was 10 balls of 100 gram yarn, of 100 gram yarn, so like a kilo of yarn and then 500 grams. Like that was just a lot of yarn. I didn't realize it, but I don't, I don't know how many balls this took, but I still have quite a bit of this yarn and um, probably not enough to knit a whole adult garment. Although maybe if I striped, of course, and things like that. But um, I definitely have quite a bit of yarn and I want to put it to good use. So I cast on another project using this yarn, um, which I'll share with you later. But I also wanted to share with you this because my first plan when I kind of left the end of Cleves pattern, because it was just, I realized it wasn't going to work for me, it wasn't going to be a sweater that I think I would get that much wear out of just because of the weight of the yarn. Um, I don't know, I kind of don't know if that's actually true though, because now that I see it I'm obsessed. I thought I would rip this back and take it out, but I didn't have to. I had enough yarn without ripping this out um, to make it work. And this is one piece of the end of Cleves. Um, it's a pieced sweater, so it's a front, back, and then the arms. And I had already knit so high that I was shaping for the underarms. So it, it's a set in sleeve sweater. Um, I just think this is such a beautiful piece of knitting. I love this piece of knitting. I love the, the really unique and kind of, yeah, unusual cable motifs. I think it's so cool. And I don't know, now that I've finished a sweater without having to rip this back, I'm wondering if there's something I could do with this sweater piece. If there's some way that I could put it to use. I definitely don't have enough yarn for um, knitting the whole sweater, I'm pretty sure, unless I were to like, no, even if I were to knit another piece with like a different yarn color, I don't think I'd have enough yarn. Um, but I just think it's so cool. And yeah, it's almost, it's just almost sad to rip it back now that there's no reason. So I was thinking maybe I could make a pillow out of it or something, or I could put it in some other project. But I don't know what. I really don't know. And I don't know if I really want a blanket like this. Also, what yarn can I use besides... I don't know. I don't really have any corresponding yarn of this weight. I'd have to double up. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to think about what to do with it. Because it seems like too sad to now rip it back. Now that I didn't have to for the other sweater. So let me know if you have any ideas about what I could do with this gorgeous piece of cable knitting. It's a very intricate knit... Um, sweater piece the cables themselves are so beautiful or the ribbing is like cabled ribbing it's just so gorgeous and yeah it's too much of a shame to throw it away or yeah i wouldn't throw it away of course but like to just rip it back or let it languish um yeah i'm not sure what to do i just love it i feel so sad like just letting it go to waste so tell me if you have any ideas for that um because i think it would be cool to to make use of it in some way but anyway, that's my first finished object. Thank you for joining me on that journey through this sweater. Um, the next little finished object I have to share with you is one that you should have seen. And that's my little tiny mini children's socks that I knit for Esmeralda. Look at them. They're so cute. They're uneven because I poorly calculated the amount of yarn I'd need for these mini socks. Um, when this one was like this far down, I was like, uh-oh, I probably am going to need a contrasting toe because I don't think I'll have enough yarn for another sock. That turned out to be true, but I'm happy with it because I used up all the little yarn of this colorway, and I think that they're so cute, and she loves them. They're like these little fairy socks. This is um, from a mini skein set from um, the Yarn Dyer Crafted by the Fates on Etsy. She does such gorgeous, sweet yarn, and um, this is a little mini skein set called Found Fae, and so this makes me think of like a little water nymph or some kind of mythical little story, fairy story character who just has these like little toes dipped in in water at some kind of a little swamp or something. I don't know. I just love them. Esmeralda loves them. I knit these for her. She chose the colorways. Um, and yeah, I love it. Also because it was a little mini skein set, these colorways just blend perfectly together. There are a lot of echoing tones in each one and they're so cute. So even though they're imperfect, I love them, she loves them, and they're really to be used and 
worn out and to really keep her feet warm when she's got cold feet in the winter and autumn to wear at home or when it's cold on cold evenings they don't need to be matching i'm not i don't really mind i'm very type b when it comes to that i'm very relaxed i don't i really don't need things like that to be perfect but i loved these i knit just kind of like a tube sock with some ribbing as the heel um this was also three by two ribbing it's perfect. It's, it holds onto her heel and it'll fit her as she grows, as her feet grow. So she'll get hopefully quite a bit of wear out of this until they don't fit anymore and then she'll pass them on to her sister. Um, and then it'll, yeah, then they'll get more wear. So yeah, I love these socks. I'm so happy with these little fairy water nymph socks. <laughs> and yeah, I, I need to knit another pair of mini socks very soon for Vivian because I feel like she needs some woolly socks too. And I don't have that many children's knit socks and they're such a fun quick knit so I'm gonna have to knit some more as well soon um, but yes the third finished object I have for you is right here and this is a surprise because I did not share these at any other time I've not sure shared these um, for a long time because this was a pair of mittens that I actually started a couple of years ago I knit one mitten and then the mitten just sat there finished waiting and um, I had shared in a in a previous video in my autumn knitting plans that I really wanted to knit some gifts and cast on some gift projects and maybe gift mittens and um, so I had this one mitten and I think it's so beautiful this is the first one I finished and I wanted to knit finish this project and gift it to someone and I had my mom in mind and they're going to be my mom's um, because my mom loves going on long, long walks all year round in the coldest winter days to the warmest summer days. She gets out there and goes on these really long walks. And um, she lives in the Midwest in the United States and it gets very, very cold there in the winter. And so I thought a very warm and toasty pair of mittens would be just the perfect thing for her. Um, I showed these to her on video to ask if she liked the colorway because I wasn't sure like if she didn't like this, I would just knit her a different pair. She's she she loved it she wants these and i thought yeah they're good no matter like what your coat color is if you have like a black coat or you know a brown coat this i feel like these dark forest gray color will match wonderfully um this yarn that i used it's held double it's worsted weight yarn and then a uh, mohair lace yarn the worsted weight yarn is leftovers from a colorwork sweater i knit for nick a long time ago um it's cascade 220 i think it's not super wash um, and it's in a forest green colorway. I think he, I don't even know the name of the colorway but I'm sure if you're looking for Cascade 20 it's pretty easy to tell which one it is um, and then I have some Filco Lana Tilia mohair silk which is in a very very similar almost identical colorway um, and I, I love how it turned out they're so soft and fuzzy and fluffy and are gonna be perfect luxurious little mittens for the um, winter now I need to block these, um, yeah, I need to block this, this was the first one I knit, and it fits very well. I have, I feel like my hands are a bit smaller than my mom's hands, um, but not very much, and these are, fit me pretty exactly. I want to block these out and maybe make them a little bit, like stretch them out a little <laughs> on the other hand. The other sock mitten I knit ended up turning out quite a bit too big. I guess my gauge has changed since I first knit this pattern. Um, I really knit very loosely it seems and um, this is the giant matching mitten so you can see what a size difference this is like it's a very big size difference um, I did recognize it as I was knitting this giant mitten and instead of reading back I decided I would continue on and knit everything just a tiny bit bigger like a little bit longer than I wanted and then felt it very lightly afterwards because I think um, I think that's okay I don't think my mom's very picky and I think it will be nice to have a very warm mitten probably silly but to try to find the exact gauge to match this wasn't really what I wanted to do. And it's really not such a big deal um, to felt it a little bit. It's kind of crazy, the size difference. You know, as a knitter, it seems like a big difference, but I think if you're wearing them, it's not, it's not such a big deal. Especially if I felt this one very lightly, it will kind of shrink down a little bit. This one, I will stretch out a little bit. <laughs> if it's terrible, I'll just knit a new pair of mittens and I'll keep these for myself. But I don't think it will be. I think it'll be very okay. And um, yeah, I'm really actually just happy with how they turned out. It was such a fun knit as well. Mittens are so quick. I love knitting mittens. Um, I forget always how much fun mittens are. The thing is, is that when you cast them on, they go really quickly. So like, 
it's kind of hard for me to like take them with me and do them completely mindlessly because I'm gonna have to okay I need to like separate stitches for a thumb knit the thumb gusset um, oh now it's time to like knit the top of the mitten like it just goes by so quickly especially at this weight of yarn probably if I knit fingering mittens it would be a different story but um, it's not the easiest to just take with me anywhere and mostly I like to have one more complex project and one really mindless project on the needles um, but yeah it's not a big deal they were a lot of fun to knit and yeah I'm gonna have to knit and cast on another pair of mittens soon because they're just wonderful gifts they use up not a huge amount of yarn perfect for like yeah just kind of a quick project as a reset I felt like it was also kind of a reset project after knitting a sweater and knitting these I really loved this so yeah I'll knit the pattern that I used as a baseline for this I it's not the same obviously because I um doubled mohair and worsted weight yarn but it's just a very simple free mitten pattern that I have um I downloaded it from Ravelry a long, long time ago, um, but I'll link it in the show notes so you can find it too if you want to knit a pair of worsted weight mittens. And I love the way that it knits up. I think the mittens are just perfect. They're so classic and just cute. And you could modify it in so many ways too. You could add texture to the pattern or even a little color work if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, really a fun pattern and fun project. So those are my finished objects. Now I'm gonna share with you my new projects, the new cast-ons I have, and um, oh, I feel like where do I start? Okay, I'm gonna start with my, my real passion project right now, although both of them are just so much fun. So I'm gonna share with you the, the one that I shared in my um, autumn knitting plan video. I was really excited when I saw this pattern for the first time. Um, I really like fell in love with it. It was a love at first sight, and I'm just falling more and more deeply in love with it as I knit it, honestly. It's such a beautiful pattern. And that is the Bifurca Vest. Um, I will put a picture here. It is such a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous design. I cannot like express how beautiful I think it is. And it's so unique. And it just exceeded my, it exceeds my expectations on how, what a fun knit it is and how engaging it is as a project. Um, so I will show you what I have so far. I cast it on maybe a week ago or two. I'm going slowly. It's really my kind of focus project. Uh-oh, stitches are slipping off the needles. Um, the project I usually work on in the evenings when my girls are asleep and um, I've got time to just look at it and work on it, full consciousness. Um, not that it even needs that because it's pretty simple color work, but it needs more focus than the other projects they have on the needles usually. So. Um, yeah, I'm really loving it. I'm savoring every stitch. And um, yeah, here's what I have so far. It's not very much, but I have cast on, knit the ribbing, and I'm about halfway through the color work. So I hope you can see how it looks. It's like this beautiful, beautiful floral color work um, motif. And yeah, next time I'm sure you'll see more, but this is what I have so far. And I'm knitting it up in very special yarn. This is November Woods Fiber Co yarn that um, is from November Woods, which was a beautiful yarn company that's now closed its doors, but it was um, my friend Alexandra's company. She was also had a knitting podcast and is just such a lovely creative person, and she um, gifted me some of this beautiful, beautiful yarn. We did a, a yarn swap, and I was waiting for the perfect project. I knit um, a project up with some of this yarn, but I've been waiting for the perfect project to just use the rest of this yarn on and I think this project is just right for it. Um, I have this first, the main colorway, which is um, called Fox Prince and it's, all this yarn is naturally dyed. She, was, she naturally dyed all her yarn and um, yeah, it's, it's just a beautiful, subtle brown, gorgeous earthy shade and then the other contrasting yarn colorways right here i'm trying to find it for you it's like all tangled up here i have these two from a little mini skin set she shared with me as well um the mini skin set was called the light keepers or it was called um the lighthouse keeper i think um it was just a beautiful set and it's these two other earthy very beautiful tones one of them is a bit more pink and one is a little bit more like sandy and i think that they together are just the perfect little marled contrast. It's a very subtle shift of color and I really just, I love how it looks. Um, I think that this, these subtle, subtle earthy shades are just so beautiful with this design. And um, then for the mini skin set, I also have some 
I have some blue yarn and some other kind of creamier yarn and some pink yarn. And I'm using that for the cast on edges. All the edges you can have the option of putting in some contrasting yarn color. And I'm doing that. I'm putting some for the neckline, for both of the sleeve or arm cast off areas, and also the bottom. And so I'm using that. It's an indigo dyed colorway. And then there's this beautiful pink and there's this beautiful cream. And I'm just gonna use them as I can getting the most out of every single little millimeter of this yarn. I think it's so beautiful. Um, and I just, I'm loving how it's turning out. It's a very lovely, a little bit rustic, but not scratchy at all base. 100% um, wool, not super wash. And um, I'm knitting double, I'm holding it double it's because this pattern calls for DK weight yarn. Now I was informed by a test knitter of this pattern that um, it was actually, it would be maybe wise to just knit one because it's tight gauge um, and not even hold a double. But I actually like a tight gauge and I think it's going to be good having it a little bit thicker. I like more dense fabric on knitwear. I like that kind of um, integrity of fabric. Um, of course, it depends on the, the design and the pattern, but I do like a more dense kind of tightly knit gauge. So I think it's wonderful and I like how it is so far. I think I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this when it's done. I'm, yeah, just really excited. I'm knitting this size three. We will see how it fits. Um, I did knit a swatch to make sure I'd get gauge. I didn't knit a colorwork swatch, which I think probably was a mistake because I really do knit colorwork very loosely. Um, I don't know, when am I going to learn? When am I going to learn? I don't know. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's okay. We're making do because I don't have any smaller needles than these. These are a US two. I don't have a smaller, I don't have a US one. I'm using a Chihuahua, Chowgu <laughs> red lace needles and I don't have any smaller than a US2, so, which is 2.75 millimeters. So it is what it is. I'm gonna make it work and try to just figure it out as I go, but it's a vest. I think it's gonna be forgiving enough and it's just so beautiful and I'm loving, loving, loving the process. The design is also really unique in its construction. I've never knit anything with this kind of construction before. It's like modular knitting which is really, really cool, and um, yeah, it's so much fun. So I can encourage you, if you've seen this pattern and you want to cast it on, do it. It's such a fun knit, and you will not regret it. I also think like knowing that it's just a vest is really a fun thing, because I feel like I rarely knit um, finer color work sweaters, because I just know that they're going to be such a long project. And this is a perfect kind of introduction into that, because it's just a vest, and um, it's not a ton of color work, it's just this beautiful piece here. I'm so excited to see it grow and progress, and then to wear it, because I, I shared in my knitting plan video, but I think I'm going to get a lot of wear out of that um, through the whole season. I'm really trying to focus on combining beauty and function in my knit process and in the pieces that I choose to knit. Um, I think, like, I've chosen sometimes patterns which are maybe not as functional, but are really beautiful or like vice versa very functional but not super super beautiful and I, I really am drawn to beautiful things so I want to put on things that I feel good in that I love the look of um, and if it's a colorway I love or a motif I love or a design that flows well and that I feel very it's very flattering and comfortable um, I'm inclined to wear it. I feel like that goes without saying I'm sure that everyone feels that way when it, when it comes to what you choose to knit and make for yourself and your wardrobe but um, I'm really trying to be conscious about that. And I think sometimes I see a pattern and I'm like, wow, that's so pretty, I wanna knit it. Um, but I just end up realizing, okay, am I gonna wear it? Probably not. Um, or I'm like, oh, it's a very wearable pattern, but then I'm like, not that into the idea of knitting it. So I'm just trying to be conscious every time that I choose a pattern, that it's going to kind of fill, the, fill those criteria and really be something I wear and love and that's useful for me and practical. And so that is one that I think will be those things. And one that I actually think in the end also my rug sweater is and will be too through the colder months. So in the spirit of using what I have, making do, and really knitting up my entire stash, which is a goal and a dream I have, um, I decided to go on and continue using the rest of this Jameson and Smith chunky yarn, because like I said, I have quite a bit of it. And um, one thing that I knew I would love to knit from it is a little sweater for my daughter. I, yeah, I feel like um, 
it's so it's so easy to get tired and sick of things or to like to want change but i really really want to use up this yarn and i know that i like the colorways and i think it would look great on her as a little sweater so i decided to use it to cast on a new project um i really think that it's going to be very cute and it's kind of a little bit of a match to my rug sweater kind of a little bit um and it's it's just a little sweater for esmeralda i'm using this colorway lupin the lighter purple as the main color and then i'm using the fuchsia colorway as a contrasting color i think and hope i have enough of this lupin colorway for the whole sweater i have 300 grams in addition to this tiny bit which was under 100 grams probably like 75 grams 50 to 75 um and i i wanted to just cast on a little project for her so i did I think I cast on 60 stitches for her, she's three, and um, then kind of designed based on just the neckline, my own little yoke for her um, with increases, and um, I'm gonna try to make a little yoked sweater that's kind of mirroring my rug sweater pattern, but with reversed colors, like reversed contrasting in main colors, and then the motif's a little bit different too, but I'm doing little flowers, and oh, it just looks so cute so far. I'm really, really enjoying this project. I just cast it on last night and knit this all up, or no, I cast it on a couple of days ago, just knit the neckline, and then kind of last night calculated the increases, um, made little charts for the colorwork motifs, and then knit as far as I knit here, and I'm more than halfway done with the little yoke. It knits up so quickly in bulky yarn, it's so cute. But yeah, there is, um, there are little floral motifs here. Um, there are these little tiny ones up here and then the bigger ones below, which are also different than the one on my rug, but they kind of reflect each other and echo each other. And yeah, I'm gonna repeat them again below and then separate for the sleeves and just knit a little body. We'll see how it turns out because, um, like I said, I kind of just really spontaneously kind of calculated what I would think would be the proper amount of stitches and increases and stuff. Um, I think this yarn is pretty forgiving and it looks like it's growing at a properly good rate, so we'll see how it, it fits her in the end. But I'm really excited about this project because I think it will be so cute to have her have a matching yoked sweater um, similar to mine and um, I just think it's so adorable. I really like it and it's a really fun way to use up this yarn and get all the use out of it that I can um, because I really do want to just get through all the yarn that I have and not have a ton of extra yarn here and there just laying around. Um, I don't know why, but it's just kind of like a, like an itch I have to like just finish with all that I have and use all that I have and um, just make use of it all because I don't have a ton, but I have a good little amount, a little mini stash here that I want to work through in the coming months and year. Um, and yeah, I think this is a very satisfying project in that way because I know that she'll love it and she'll wear it. So yeah, that's my mini, mini little yoked sweater, um, little flower chunky sweater for Esmeralda. And that's actually the last project I have on the needles. I feel like this is going to knit up so quickly just because last night this is what I finished. Um, I think I'm going to soon finish the rest of the color work and then after that, the body and the sleeves I'm sure are going to just fly off the needles because it's just stuck in it and this yarn is so bulky that it goes by so quickly. Um, yeah, it's just so much fun. So that's my little mini project. And this is kind of my mindless project of the moment, my more um, easy kind of project. Yeah, it's funny to not have something 100% stock in it. I feel like I really want to cast on a pair of socks, but I am resisting. And I think when I finish that, I'll cast on a pair of socks. I do think that maybe in the future, I will have a pair of socks always just with me. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I really have to protect my like mind and th this feeling because I'm very susceptible to like getting stressed out about not finishing things or feeling like um, kind of like my st running out of steam with things. So yeah, I'm still just trying to work through that and finish and, and find my um, flow in that regard. But yeah, anyway, I have my whole entire delicious tea here. I have its um, blueberry muffin tea, which is just such a treat. I love, love, love like dessert teas and really yummy sweet teas. Um, it's just like a tea bag. I think it has stevia in it as like the sweetener, but it's so yummy. It tastes really like a blueberry muffin. Um, I love, love that. I know that's not everyone's thing. Nick doesn't really like that, for example. He's like, why would you, why would you want like a tea to taste like, like a baked good? But I don't know. I think it's so yummy. It's just so good. It feels like a treat. So. 
Oh, it's so yummy. It's really good cold, so that's also good because I've let it sit there and it's gotten nice and cold. But, uh, yeah, I've shared with you all my knitting now, so, um, yeah, I, I will just chat with you for a couple of minutes. Recently on my blog, I shared a little bit of an update on my journey with social media. Um, I have been someone, I think that there are people who are just totally chill with social media and like have no issue with it and then there are other people who really kind of struggle with it and either kind of stop using it or um, who just kind of are torn with it and, and don't feel like it's that healthy for them or they don't really like it in their personal use of it. I don't know, I see a lot of different things on YouTube and on Instagram people kind of grappling with or thinking about um, social media and their use of it. So if you're like someone who's super chill with social media, like I, this is not, this conversation is probably not interest, of interest to you, but I'm someone who finds that if I'm, I'm, I'm can't resist scrolling on Instagram, for example, if I have it on my phone and it's just there and down moments, I will just scroll away. And there are times where that's okay with me, but there are other times where it really is like, it drains me in the end and it's actually the opposite of restful and I am have these like moments where actually I should be resting mentally or um, doing something which is uplifting in some way and instead to kind of just doom scroll drains me and makes me feel like just depressed and so um, in order to combat that I've tried in the past couple of years to implement different kind of rituals and structures to kind of make me help me have a healthy relationship with social media if that makes sense and i found so much like that that's been the case like if i if i've implemented a structure it's helped me so much um last year after having vivian i went off of instagram almost completely for a long long time for months and months i check in online sometimes and like that was such an amazing phase of my life because i really did not miss it. Um, I miss certain things about it. I miss staying up to date with friends and seeing different people and there is a lot of inspiration to be found, but um, it was actually, honestly, big picture, amazing. Great for me and honestly, I read so much more and ended up feeling much more like restful mentally and yeah, it was just amazing for me. Um, but I've returned to Instagram in the past couple of months and um, have just really like enjoyed it and been like, but then kind of fallen back into habits of like, just doom scrolling in a way that I didn't like. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of wrote this blog post recommitting and rethinking about how I would engage with social media. And in the last couple of weeks, I've implemented those structures and I feel like it's been such an amazing experience. I feel like so much more, I don't know, in control is a strange way of saying it, but I feel like it's a much more restful engagement I have with it. And I can get the benefits of social media and enjoy it without being overwhelmed by it or um, overstimulated by it. Um, because I think like I'm highly sensitive to that stimuli and it's then too much for me. But um, yeah, so now I've like kind of had the schedule of deleting the app, turning it off a couple, most of days of the week and then having it back on my phone for like three days a week or four days a week. And sometimes it stays on for an extra day or two and that's okay. And then, but usually I have this now kind of like this calibrator or like some kind of like measuring system within me and my mind where I know it's okay, I'm feeling overstimulated, like I'll delete it for a couple days. And that's just been so good. So I can just encourage you, if you are someone who also feels torn or overstimulated by, or like social media, you have this kind of ambivalent relationship with it to try to find a structure which works for you. Really just deleting the app, it seems like it's a hard thing, but it's so easy to delete it and then re-download it and log in. It takes like 10 seconds. And think about back in the day when we were on the computer, we would like have to log in all the time. It takes like 10 seconds to log in and download. It's so easy. And um, having it for me off of my phone, out of sight, out of mind, it's just a great, great help. And then on the days where it's on and I'm on there a little too much, I feel it so acutely. That helps me keep this kind of inner compass about when it's been too much or when it's okay and um, yeah and my husband Nick has now gotten rid of his smartphone altogether which has also brought in another kind of a ambiance into our home because um, he just has now like a dumb phone he has a Nokia phone um, and it's just been so cool so yeah anyway kind of a, an interesting tangent to go on right now but I did post a blog about it and so I was wanting to share with you because since then it's been a couple of weeks and I just feel like it's such it's been so good to have these structures and yeah 
if you are interested in that or you would like to have ideas about what structures could be, I'll link my video I made on structural ideas for finding boundaries with social media and I'll link my blog post too below and in the show notes too. Um, but yeah, tell me if you have that, if that, if you have any kind of a, how your relationship with social media is, if you find that you have an ambivalent relationship towards it, why, if it's because it's overstimulation, if you feel like pressure to perform, I know some people have that. Um, that's not so much my case. I almost like want to post more. I feel like I tend to not, um, which I want to get in the habit of because I do think one benefit of like Instagram, for example, is having this amazing um, kind of a, a journal or a diary of things that you've done or places you've been or um, yeah, things you've made. And I think that's a really fun aspect of social media and one of the reasons why I want to stay engaged with it on some level because um, yeah, I, I just like to look back and see, okay, what have I made? What have I done? Where have I been? Um, what did my days look like in a certain season of life? And um, that's for me a really positive aspect of Instagram, for example, or social media. As a whole, I really just use Instagram. I don't have TikTok, I've never had that, or um, really any other social media platform except YouTube. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's that. Um, other than that, I've been working and naturally dyeing things, fabric, textiles. I decided not to share it here because I'm going to share that I think in a, a different time, a little bit more contained than naturally dyeing, natural dyeing that I've been doing. Um, it's not really knitting, so. It's a little bit different than this, but yeah, that's also been a really, really fun pastime and something I've been just so inspired by and enjoying so much. And yeah, I don't know. I think like working with textiles is really just so much fun because it's such a tactile experience, creative experience, and um, it just it feels like you're working with living materials, um, which I, I always have loved. I, in another life, a long, long time ago, um, I used to work as a florist before I moved to Germany. That was my main kind of job, career path was floristry and floral design. Um, and I was, I really loved that so much. Floristry and floral design is really stressful <laughs> in a professional setting. I think it was, maybe it was also where I worked in the context I was in, but you're working with live materials and you have like kind of like a time limit always and it's it's an intense career but i loved it so much um and it really gave me a love for working with things that are alive and and that have kind of a, a texture and qualities of their own um that are organic materials and that's how i feel so much about knitting and working with textiles because i like to work of course with natural fibers like most of the time um like wool and and then textiles like even cellulose fibers cotton linen silk um protein silk is not obviously not cellulose but they all have a certain organic natural quality to them and they're all so unique and have kind of like an essence of their own which is just so much fun it's almost like you're working with this material together as like a living being and then if you're naturally dying the material with which you're dying um just it's so much fun and so exciting so anyway i'm talking enough i won't keep you any longer it's just been so much fun to sit with you and chat with you today and um, share with you about what I've been working on and all my projects. Um, if you'd like to find me, you can find me on meriwetherliving.com and you can subscribe. I'll leave the link in the show notes below to my um, newsletter, the Meriwether Journal. It's just a little monthly newsletter where I share kind of like more intimate details on my personal journey projects I'm working on, inspiration I have, a recipe, poetry I'm enjoying, things like that. So if you're interested in that, you can subscribe. And if you subscribe, you will also get a 15% discount on my recently released pattern, the Moon River Socks. Um, um, you can also find me on Instagram as Meriwether Living. And yeah, I can't wait to see you again next time for more knitting conversation. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful autumn or spring if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. And just endless creative inspiration. Okay, take care. Bye.